it going? Hope you are good. Today we're going to be doing my full review of the Amaze Fit X. I did an unboxing and a first look about a week ago and I've been wearing this watch now for all of that time, every day, all night, and now I'm ready to do the full review. We're going to talk about the curved display, we're going to talk about what it's like to use on a day-to-day -day basis, how accurate the tracking features are, how good the health features are. So just a quick background and some specs on this watch. The Amaze Fit X is a curved smartwatch. It's the first curved smartwatch from this company. It features a 2.07 inch AMOLED display that's curved to 92 degrees. The display features 226 pixels per inch HD resolution and 400 nits of brightness. The resolution of the screen is 206 by 640 pixels. There's no manual controls, there is just simply a force touch sensor which will activate the screen and it will also automatically activate when you move your wrist. The sensors in the watch consist of an accelerometer and a gyroscope, a PPG heart rate sensor and a blood... blood? A blood... a blur. A blood... oh my god, what's wrong with me? A blood oxygen saturation sensor. There is also a microphone and a ambient light sensor. For connectivity, it features Bluetooth 5.0 and it also features internal GPS. According to the specs, the battery should last between five and seven days and it features a magnetic charging cable. So those are the specs, but you know, specs are specs. They can say what they want, but what is it actually like to use on a day-to-day -day basis? Let's look at the design of the watch first because essentially that is the most interesting thing about it. That's what makes this watch special. This curved display, wow. I mean, it is really quite beautiful. Um, it's so bright, so colorful. It's definitely the best screen that uh, from any Amaze Fit watch I've ever used. And to be honest, it looks just as good as um, watches from other companies, you know, like Samsung and Huawei. They, the screen really is what makes this watch um, unique. It's its best feature by far. There are not a huge amount of watch faces available right now, but there's a good like 20 or 30. I have looked at a few. I've chosen my favorite one. Um, I think most of them look pretty good. Let's talk about really the curved aspect of the watch because again, that's what makes it unique. It's curved to 92 degrees. Is that really, is it a gimmick? You know, do you need a curved watch? Is it worth spending money just to get a curved display? I am not sure, to be honest. I can see why it would be good. So basically the curved aspects of it allows the watch to wrap around your wrist entirely, or at least the display to wrap around your wrist. So technically you have more space to show more information, which is true. You can see like full notifications, full messages. There's a lot of data displayed on there straight away. However, compared to say a Apple watch or a normal square rectangular sized watch, the, the difference isn't massive, I don't think. I think it makes it easier to read, it makes it easier to view information. Um, but is it the be all and end all? I don't think it's revolutionary. I think it looks cool. So far, everyone who's seen me wear this watch, all my friends, they're just like, what is that? Like, is that a watch? And I'm like, yeah. And um, they all think it looks really awesome. Everyone who I've shown it to thinks it looks really awesome and futuristic, which I agree. There have been some other curved watches in the past, and this is not too, dissimilar to them, but um, I don't think it's very common and people are not used to seeing curved displays. So just for that, if you want to show off and you want people to think that you are ahead of the game, then this is certainly something that will do that for you. Now the downside to the design for me is, um, well, it's a little bit on the thick side. Now I think that is the uh, give and take for this curved design, curved display. It makes the watch a little bit thicker. They have to put more of the components into a smaller space. Sometimes I feel I have to adjust the watch a bit more often than with my other smartwatches. Also in my unboxing video, I did mention that the strap um, was a bit loose. It didn't really, uh, go all the way around my wrist. However, I didn't realize that the watch comes with two straps. So there is a smaller one and a larger one. Let me get it. So yeah, there's a, a smaller one, which I've now attached to the band and then that comes with this larger one. So you do have the option. I, I, I'm i glad um, that, that they did that. I just didn't see the, the other strap when I did the unboxing video. Smaller strap fits me fine, um, even though I've got like very thin wrists. So that's good. You don't have to worry about that. 
So I mentioned before that the Amaze Fit X is a buttonless watch. There's no manual controls, which kind of gives it that sleek effect. It gives it a very sleek looking design, which um, I like. However, it does feature a little touch sensor on the side, which you can touch to activate the screen. I will say I would have actually preferred a physical button, even just a tiny one that you can actually press in because sometimes I just don't know where this touch sensor is. And sometimes I find myself just touching random places because it won't actually Activate. Um, so I wish there was actually a physical button to activate the screen. I think it would have been better. But apart from that, I really can't argue with the design. The downside for me is the thickness and the fact that there's no manual button to activate the screen. Um, but really, it does look really cool. I mean, the the build, the design, the screen of the watch is basically the reason you're going to get it. If if you are interested, that is what makes this watch unique, and it is the reason I quite like it. I think it does look amazing. Also, the strap is quite basic I mean it's just a rubber strap I think if there are gonna be other ones available I would prefer to get a metal or a leather one just to go with how good the screen is but let's go on now to the more health and tracking related features of this watch because essentially that's what it is it's a smartwatch it's supposed to be able to track your health your fitness and give you some data and information so how accurate are the sensors to be honest, if you're familiar with other Amazfit watches um, like the GTS, GTR, um, even the Amazfit BIP or BIP S, this basically features the same sensors as those watches. It features the PPG heart rate sensor, it features the dual accelerometer and gyroscope to measure your um, steps and to measure when you're moving and when you're not. So if you know a bit about those watches or, your own, or you own one of them, this basically uses the same tech as those other smartwatches, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but don't expect a huge leap in terms of accuracy. Um, I find the sensors to be pretty accurate. The heart rate sensor works just as well as my other smartwatches. It also features an SPO2 tracker, which many other smartwatches don't have yet. It also features internal GPS, which is good. That means you don't need to carry a phone with you if you want to go on a bike ride, a run, something outside, you wanna track your location, you can do that automatically on the watch. I find the GPS to be accurate, uh, reasonably so. I mean, I did some workouts. I'll show you the results on the app in a minute. You can see um, how well the GPS tracked my location. But for the most part, it's again, the same as other Amazfit smartwatches, which is broadly accurate, but it's not going to be pinpoint. It's not to, you know, one meter. It's more like to five meters of accuracy. So yeah, actually, let's go and look at some uh, workouts that I tracked. I think I've done three. I went for a walk, I did a bike ride, and I um, tracked some a workout at the gym. So for the walk and the bike ride, I used the GPS, so we can take a look at the results here on the Zep app, which is the app used to connect to the smartwatch and view your data, etc. So you can take a look here, you can take a look at the results. The GPS connected within about 15 seconds of me activating it. It doesn't work, obviously, when you go through a tunnel or something, so sometimes there's some gaps. But to be honest, that is the route that I took. That is pretty much exactly the route I took. I'm not gonna complain, that is pretty much what I want from a watch. Again, it's basically just a repackaged Amazfit uh, GTS or um, GTR. It's using pretty much the same sensors, um, I guess with the extra one being the SPO2 tracker. So I have no complaints, but also for the price of the watch, this is much more expensive than those other watches. It is basically the same technology. There are also some other health features. There's uh, the pedometer, a step goal reminder, a sleep tracker. The heart rate sensor is 24 hours a day, all day, continuous, so you can see your trends, you can see your resting heart rate, that kind of stuff. Like all other Amazfit watches, the Amazfit X can't access any app store. You can't download extra apps. It is stuck with what it uh, comes with. There's a weather app, there's a find my phone app, an event reminder, a calendar. You can control your music. The one thing that I will say about this watch is the battery life is not as good as they claim on the website. They say up to seven days. I have had to charge this probably every three or four days. There is also something that I missed in my uh, unboxing. There is a microphone on this watch. Now, apparently I've been told it's not been activated yet. That's gonna come in a future software update. So that could mean that in the future you have access to the voice assistants because sometimes these features are only available in China, but we'll see. It seems a bit pointless to have a microphone and not use it. 
So again, all of these features are great, um, but we find them in cheaper Amazfit smartwatches and indeed cheaper smartwatches from other companies. The main thing about this watch is the design. That is what you are paying for. That is what you are paying a premium for. Now, when I bought the watch, I was one of the first backers because it was from Indiegogo, um, I think it is, yeah. and. I only paid, I think, $150 or 150 pounds. Can't remember which one it is. That was like an early bird discount. At that price, I would say that this watch it would be an, an amazing watch to have. It, that would be very good value for money. Actually, yeah, it's a lot more than that. It's a $329 right now. And the reason you're paying that much for this is because of the screen. It's because of how good it looks, of the unique nature of it. If you are not interested in that and you don't really care, you just want a sports tracking watch that can do all of the stuff that I've mentioned. There are cheaper watches available, even in this brand, even Amazfit watches have the same technology in a cheaper package. They don't look as good, they're not as unique, but they'll do the same health and fitness tracking. If you want a watch that looks different, you want it to stand out, you want, you love this curved bright display, then that's what you're paying for, but you are paying a premium. I mean, if that's what you want, then this is the watch to get because it does look awesome. Like I will say it looks awesome. That is my review of the Amazfit X. Um, let me know what you think. Are you convinced? Do you think this watch is worth it? Do you think the curved screen is worth paying that money for? If you're into tech and gadgets, then obviously feel free to subscribe because do you know what? I've got so many more coming in the next few weeks and you know what? It's free. Why not do it? But until next time, I will see you around. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I will see you next time. Bye.